you for inviting me for this wonderful conference and um, my topic is coronary reaccess after tower so instead of one while i said let me make it a kind of a presentation that helps everybody because this is a epidemic that is going to come post coronary post tower coronary access so very soon we are going to see such scenarios where you can see the rca lesion after tower and the lesion after tower and this is another led lesion so we want to be able to i mean there might there must be only 100 centers in the country which are doing tavis but there are at least more than 1000 or even much much more and many centers who are doing pcis so each of them have to understand and know how to access a coronary in a post tower patient so our objective is to avoid this type of kinking of catheter and getting jailed inside the valve where you are not able to access the coronary so coronary artery disease and aortic stenosis are very commonly coexist progression of coronary artery disease after tavi is not unlikely particularly when we are treating younger and lower risk patients now so tavi patients um yeah so tavi patients with cad are 40 to 75% 3 to 6% of this post tavi patients need a pci and according to one study the median time from post tavi pci was 18 months but mind you these are elderly patients so i just present this one slide if you see the data between 2012 and 2015 the age of patients undergoing tavi the maximum is 80 to 84 and 85 to 89 so basically maximum patients undergoing tavi earlier were between 80s and 90s and now we have all young age patients between 60s and 70s and less than 75 getting tavers so we are going to see much more of coronary uh, challenges and uh, we will need to be very well appraised about how to access coronaries after taver so how do you do that with knowledge tips and right hardware so pci or angiography after taver patient these are the various steps so one what is the timing of tower whether you should do pci prior to tower or pci after tower so when you do pci before tower the advantage are coronary access is easier and you reduce the contrast use compared to combined tower plus pci and disadvantage is pci may have a greater risk in setting up severe as you need to take a repeat vascular access and it is less convenient so when you are planning a pci or a coronary angiogram in a post tower patient you should and if you have time it's not, if it is not an acs scenario you can do a ct scan to understand the valve frame anatomy and the relationship of the coronary in, in uh, respect to the uh, tower valve that will help you in understanding how to access that coronary so access wise femoral access is always preferred because it's or anyways is going to be challenging to access the coronary from a tower valve frame so it's better to go from femoral than radial better control so engagement wise what are the various factors that decide access post tower so number one anatomical factors sinus tubular junction dimension sinus height leaflet length and bulkiness and sinus of also of width and coronary height all these factors will decide whether you can or cannot access a coronary after tower also type of device commissural tab and design commissural is the part of the valve where the leaflets are sutured commissural orientation ceiling skirt and valve implant depth so let's talk about anatomical consideration so the you should have to know the device that you are using so sinus tubular junction diameter sinus height bulkiness of the leaflet like if you are doing a tower in a type 0 bulky leaflet where uh, as the leaflets are going to be very bulky and they are more likely i mean the coronary access is going to be much much more challenging in a type 0 with bulky leaflet post tower compared to a normal tricuspid valve where the leaflets are not that bulky because ultimately even your native leaflets will come and come into your way if they are bulky sinus of valve valve width and coronary height so larger the sinus of valve valve easier the access again the device uh, characteristics are very important if you are doing a metronic evolute or or evolute pro valve you have to know the waist diameter because this is most likely the place where your coronary osteas will lie you have to know the commission and the skirt height the inner skirt and the outer skirt in evolute pro if you see in evolute valve the skirt is 13 to 14 mm and the average coronary height is 
10 to 12 millimeter. So if you implant the device at 2 to 3 millimeter depth, then you are just about okay for a coronary access. But if you are implanted at zero, and if you're already the skirt is above 14, then coronary access is going to be really challenging because your coronary is 12, skirt height is 14. So coronary will not get occluded at the time of tower because from, from the valve frame, the blood will still flow. But putting a catheter will be difficult. And then comes commissural height. Commissures are the part where the leaflets are sutured. They are even higher. So this commissure, like B portion, is even higher, like 26, 26 millimeter. So if this commissure comes in front of a coronary ostia, then good luck engaging that coronary in future. You will have a lot of difficulty. So in this metronic valve, the blue area is the area where your coronary access is going to be difficult. If your coronary ostia lies anywhere in front of this blue area, where this height of the skirt, which is 13, and height of this uh, commissures, which is 626, if the coronary ostia is anywhere in this blue area, you are going to have challenging and challenging uh, accessing that coronary. Uh, so the tips are use a smaller guide. After tower, the aortic root becomes feminine. That means if you are going to take a JL4, take a JL3.5. So smaller guide because you have to go through the frame. So left, JL3.5, JL3 are good. XB and EBU carry the risk of entrapment like this. You can go through, but coming out will be a challenge. And for right, the regular guides are okay. So this is a patient post-evolute has an RCA lesion here. You see that it is difficult to get the guide across. So you have to put the guide liner. Guide is outside. This is the guide liner. And then the PCI is being performed. And this was the GR4 guide with a guide liner inside and a good result. Similarly, a LED plasty also, where there was a left main ostia was compromised, whether it was because of post tower valve expansion or whether it was a native um, leaflet or occluding it, difficult to say. But taking a smaller guiding like a J, uh, like an EBU3 and make sure you keep the wire inside when you disengage from a tower valve frame. Because, so this is your guiding going through the tower valve. If you try to get it, get it out without a wire, you will kink or damage the catheter. But if this is the picture where the guiding is inside, and then if the wire is also inside, and on the wire, if you remove it, you will be able to get it out easily. This is an aligned tower trial. We all know commercial alignment trial, where you, uh, in the Metronic valve, you go at a uh, flush point at 3 o'clock, and there will be a 70% chance that your commissures, or this area, which is 26 millimeter, will not come against a coronary. But again, difficult. So this was that. Then comes the balloon expandable valve, the my valve or the sapien valve. The co here, commission, there is no high commissure. Commissure is just a small frame like this. And the ceiling skirt is very shallow. So this is a characteristic of a sapien valve, where inner skirt height is around 9 to 10 millimeter, which was 13 with the metronic valve. And overall frame height is also very small. And this is the characteristic of the Indian my valve, which is according to me, an excellent valve. The average ceiling skirt height is, again, around 10 to 11 millimeter. So if you implant the valve at 2 millimeter depth, any coronary which is higher than 9 millimeter, all of all the most, most of the coronaries are higher than 9, then you are very good to engage this coronary through this open cell, so open struts, I would say. So this 11 millimeter, if you implant the valve at zero depth, this yellow portion becomes your non-accessible area. But normally you implant with the left side picture, the red line is the uh, zone of implantation depth. So you've implanted a three to four millimeter depth, then only nine millimeter above the annulus you're not able to engage. That means almost all coronaries are easy to engage. So this is again a case of my valve, post my valve circumflex PCI. Uh, and obviously using a guide liner. So, and it is a very important part to know that any PCI post tower, a guide liner or a guidezilla or a telescope catheter are going to be your friends. And there are no tips and tricks for engaging uh, 
coronary is after a my valve or a sapien because it is quite easy compared to a metronic valve so all your regular catheters should be able to do the job also in balloon expandable valve if you load the valve with certain type of uh, uh commissure at 3 o'clock 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 12 o'clock position this is also experimental but here also you can achieve commissural alignment that means commissures of the valve overlapping with the commissures of the uh, uh native valve this was an interesting trial coronary access after after tower it was an observation thing so based on the ct scan they decided whether the ct scan after tower is showing coronary access favorable or unfavorable okay so in evolute the favorable coronary access was only in 77% and they were able to engage all these coronaries in sapien ct scan said 91% were favorable coronary access based on ct scan after tower and they could engage those coronaries but even 33% of those which were classified on ct as unfavorable coronary access were uh, were uh, you know they were being to engage post tower so the okay, another reaccess study which shows coronary can, uh, cannulation after tower three independent risk factor for adverse coronary cannulation are commissural commissures of the valve coming against the coronary ostia type of valve that means mainly evolute and depth of implantation if the depth, depth of implantation is very shallow again you are likely to have difficulty in future accessing the coronaries so you want to implant shallow but not too shallow that you want to you know you kind of come almost zero and then you have difficulty engaging the coronaries so in summary angioplasty and angiography are possible in post tower patient with high success rate for evolute valve reduce the catheter size by half a millimeter and leave the wire in coronary while retracting the guide to avoid interaction with the prosthesis use standard catheters from my valve and sapien 3 liberal use of guide extenders and this is the most important point predictors of different difficult coronary access after tower are based on the whatever studies we have evolute processes depth of valve implantation and commissural overlap with the coronaries so there is last point but not the least there is a learning curve to this but be prepared read up watch youtube or watch a youtube engage in discussions with high volume operators because now we are doing a lot of towers in 60s and 70s year olds and it is just a matter of time that we all of us will have to engage these coronaries from the valve frame so it's coming and we better be prepared for it thank you very much